Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the build of this Fabeo F-15. Amazing, awesome, huge jet. It is rainy and nasty outside in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. My name's Jonathan. If this is your first time coming to my channel, hit that subscribe button down below. Let's roll that intro and get started on the next steps of this build. guys well this is video I think number four of the of the build series of the f-15 if you haven't watched the other ones there's a link down below to the playlist check that out and uh, in case you missed anything that's where you can look so we are moving forward in this video meaning we've got the hot section all finished our rudders are finished our elevators are finished and we are ready to start moving forward so we're going to probably be running some airlines as the first step in this video we are going to reinstall the engines the ducting uh, we have to get the tanks installed and we may no promises but we may get the nose bolted on this aircraft in this episode we'll see how that goes but uh let's dive into this all right, so next steps here, guys, is we are going to start running the airlines for the gear itself. So what I like to do in this case is I like to take off the airlines that they've installed and just reinstall them. Now, these airlines look like they're good airlines. They're nice and flexible, and uh, they're not stiff and hard um, like some of the airlines out there. So we're just going to chop this off and pull the airlines off of the gear and get them reinstalled, and we'll start routing those forward now we want to make a nice clean install with all this stuff and primarily the doors as well too when we do all that we've got to keep uh, everything out of the way so we're going to have to do some figuring in that area but uh, first step is pull those lines off and start over all right guys so i've just been playing around with the line routing and stuff it is helpful if you can keep the colors consistent but for example, I may come to this point here and I may switch to a different color going to the air control units just because I've got so much white and black line to use and this is nice line. So I may do all the gear doors in white and black, but on the joint here where I put a connector joint, I, that, that's where the color may switch. So just keep that in mind when you're doing this stuff. All of the little keepers that we're using here, they are available on my website, thelightersideofrc.com, uh, in the shop. And those are all 3D printed uh, air keepers, and they are amazing. I love using these things. So anyways, we've routed the, the main gear like this. I was going to go down the sides of the fuselage, but I like the idea of coming down the center. Uh, with all the airlines and tucking it beside the fuel tanks. So anyways, that's the way we're going to route the uh, the main gear as well too. So we've got those coming to this point and then going forward. All right, guys, so we've got the lines all run. I just need to hook up the lines that are going to go towards the front of the airplane for the main gear. Uh, what I'm going to do next is cut the intake. So what I've done is installed the intake done a rough measurement of where they need to be cut i'm sure we'll need to probably cut more but basically the front of the turbine kind of sits right in line with the former here and so that's how we're going to cut that now you could cut that with a dremel and a cutoff wheel i have these heavy duty scissors um, made by cutco I'm not sponsored by cutco at all i just these things work amazing they can cut pennies in half so anyways this is what i use to cut the uh the fiberglass like this so works no problem so i'm just going to give this a rough cut i'll get it reinstalled and see how it fits all right yes we're looking at the underside guys we've got all of the air systems run at the front here now the reason we flipped this upside down chad had a great point here is the airlines kind of come in this area down the center on both sides like that so this is definitely a potential issue that could happen. So gear doors open, you know, you get one of these airlines popping up on 
the other side of the uh, the actual hinge there and then maybe that interferes with the gear door operation so a great idea to look for things like that so what we're going to do is we are going to take a piece of a little bit more rigid foam so this isn't super squishy it's not hard though we're just going to fold this over in half and jam it in there we're going to put some gorilla glue just a little strip on each side and that's going to help hold it in place and that's going to keep the lines running right down the center and keep it away from our gear doors and that should solve the problem and then one of the other things we're going to take a look at when the plane's upside down like this is we can take our air compressor put it on each line and check the operation of all these systems which is another cool thing too so we can make sure the gear doors work all right guys so now what we can do is we can test all the individual systems and make sure they work this gears up and it's already locked so what we'll do is we'll do gear up first and then we'll do gear down what we're using for this is just the robart pump the nice thing with the robart pump is you can slowly pump it up rather than using compressed air and you can actually see how much air it takes to cycle things okay we're doing the blue line first i can't remember what that is that's gear up Okay, I'll do the gray, which is gear down. Oh. <laughs> that was probably the worst part about cutting those, those intakes. I could feel it. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Always wear gloves when you're working with fiberglass. I don't, but you should. Okay, so 10 PSI. It's like 15. 20. And then what we can do is we can pump it up and see if it's leaking. So no quick leaks because it's staying at 80 PSI. Let's play with some gear doors. So this is one of those exercises guys to do with an air system especially in a situation like this where this the lines and everything is not easy to access. So what we've done is we've basically filled up both sides of the gear, both sides of the air system. Okay guys, next step in the air system is we need to get the air tanks mounted. Now typically one of the normal places to put them is in the nose of the airplane. Now because these tanks are so massive, um, only one of these would fit in the nose of the airplane. So one of the other options, because these air tanks don't weigh much, it really doesn't matter where you put them. Obviously, we're putting them quite far back behind the CFG, but again, they don't weigh much. So uh, I've done this in other planes as well, too. I've stuck them in the back beside the pipes, and it works out really, really well. So all we're going to do in this case is we've hooked up the line to it, uh, put some safety wire on these lines because they're fairly close to the heat. And all we're going to do is basically put a couple globs of silicone stick them in there wiggle them around a little bit and they stick nicely to the fuselage and they don't ever come out unless you want them to so if you are putting stuff in with silicone uh, I've done that in in my tanks like on the diamond as an example uh, it works really well to get it off you just tuck a piece of safety wire or fishing line behind the silicone and it just slices right through and comes right out so it's an easy uh easy permanent slash temporary fix. So we're gonna get those glued in and that's the next step. All right, so in order to progress with any of the systems installation, we need to figure out the front tank. Now we are not using the front tank for fuel, that's just gonna be used for smoke. So the plan with the fuel tanks is we're gonna put the stock saddle tank in there and then we're going to put the uh, 40 ounce Dubro tank, which fits right above that tank, right on top. So we're gonna have one system for one turbine, another system for another turbine. And that nice thing about that is it keeps the weight close to the C of G, which is right about there. So with our saddle tanks, 
uh, and all the all the fuel in this area, it's going to be a much better solution than having that fa almost five liter tank sitting this far in front of the uh, the um, the C of G. So way better system. So what we've done is we have shortened or shrunk the primary fuel tank. Now we could have just left this in the way it was. The, there's only one downside to it. Number one, you're never gonna put, well, there, I guess there's two, you're never gonna use that much smoke. And the other thing was if we were to put that tank in, it actually sits right up here and our big plate that we're gonna put in there, we'd have to have a cutout for the, the tank. So it's a much better situation if we shrink the tank a little bit, and then we can use this entire area for the uh, startup plate. So we took about two inches off the main tank. Um, now this is gonna, when this is put all back together, this is now gonna fit well, and it's not gonna interfere with our main plate. And then we've also probably gone from about 4.7 liters down to about three maybe somewhere in that range so so it's still a pretty sizable tank for smoke fluid but this is the amount that we took out of the center so sometimes in these situations you can cut the tank this way and shrink it but because of the design of this tank we weren't able to uh, to do that because that hump would have interfered and just wouldn't have worked out for us so uh, this is a, a better solution we uh, got rid of our bung right there so we'll have to put a new bung in there which again works out well as well so i like that new tank shape design size it looks really good and uh so we're going to get this glued together so when you're dealing with kevlar like this uh, the kevlar tends to not cut it tends to fray all right guys so we are gluing the tank together already mixed up some 20 minute high saw right there holy there you are um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do this a little bit different. We're going to put a ridge around the tanks, do a butt joint, let that cure, and then come back and sand it and fiberglass it together. So it's going to be a bit of a different process, but uh, it'll make extra sure that it never moves. So we did prep the tanks on the belt sander, so got them fairly close in fit. They're not perfect, but that's okay because we are not relying just on this to seal the tank. There we go guys, it's all glued. And uh, so once that cures, probably tomorrow, we'll sand this down and we'll put a, about a one inch or uh, more fiberglass joint. Kind of like what they did on the outside here, but we'll do it wider. So we'll do a fiberglass joint all the way around with epoxy and that will uh, add a second layer of grip and strength and seal. All right guys, took the tape off the tank and that worked out beautifully. It's incredibly strong. And if I had to guess right now, other than maybe a couple areas like that one, um, it's probably 100% sealed actually. So that, uh, that worked out good. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sand uh, a band about one inch wide. So I already cut my cloth. Now this is pretty heavy uh, fiberglass cloth, but it's uh, not starch, so it folds really easily. So we're just going to sand this out we want to come past a little bit, past the gap. So I'm going to come right to kind of the bottom lip there and then about there. And then we're going to glass that joint all the way around. And that will, uh, should seal our tank nicely. So I'm just going to sand that out and I will uh, put the fiberglass on. All right guys, so the tank's all sanded. Now this step is extremely, extremely important. Um, I had a bunch of high saw that made it onto the tank the non-joint area yesterday 
And basically, I could take a knife or my finger almost and peel that epoxy off because it doesn't stick to a smooth surface like this. The sanding or the, uh, the roughening up of the surface is extremely important. Otherwise it won't stick. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take our rubbing alcohol and on a paper towel and get rid of all the dust on the joint. There we go. So we're ready to, uh, to lay glass over top of that. So it's gonna be pretty simple. All we're gonna do is mix up some, uh, probably some 15 minute epoxy and we're gonna paint it on the joint, lay the glass cloth on there and uh, do a couple of wraps. Now I cut two long strips, so we've got almost enough to go around there twice. So I'm gonna go around and then around again and uh, we'll have a nice uh, strong, solid, uh, leak proof joint. All right, guys, and there is the finished product. Um, it, the epoxy is just starting to kick off now and uh, worked out good. So we'll let this cure up and then we can just lightly sand any of the little uh, pieces of uh, fiberglass that are sticking out there. And then once that's cured, we can put the bung hole in and see if we uh, have a nice seal. Well, guys, you know it's a good day when you get a package from Revic wing bags, but it's an even better day when you get two packages from Revic and they probably have three sets of customer bags in them. I mean, it's better when it's for you, but uh, we got three sets of wing bags that showed up today. So we've got a set for the large F18, which used to be here and then it went away and then now it's back because we're making some changes. We've got a set for the F15 that we're working on right now, the FB Jets F15. And there's also a set in here for an A10. Hmm. All right, guys, this is the first set for the FB Jets F15. Now this is a uh, pretty crazy set of bags. We'll take a look at this and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so I think we've got an elevator bag, an elevator bag, a rudder bag, a rudder bag, wing bag, bomb bag. Ah, that is awesome. All right, guys, and then we've got two more sets here. So I'll show you what this stuff's for. So this set here is for the Skymaster A10. Wink, wink. And this set here is for the Skymaster F18, which we're still gonna work on and make some changes to. On the Skymaster, we've got two elevators. Oh, those will be for the rudders. We've got two elevators. And we've got a set of wing bags with the wing tube holder built into one of them. All right, guys, well, if you're looking for the absolute best bags out there, Revic custom bags, they do wing bags, fuselage bags, airplane bags, tons of amazing things. Uh, check out my website, thelightersideofrc.com. There's a link down below in the description of this video, and uh, you can contact me and I can get you a quote on the Revic bags to suit your plane. And these are definitely the best way to protect your investment and uh, keep it from getting hanger rash. All right, guys, tank is all done, and boy, is it ever solid. There is like zero movement, zero give. So the way this is supposed to sit in there is like that. The downside to having it sit in there like that is we wanna try and put the air valves in this area. So we have that bump to deal with. So we can flip it around like this. Problem is, then your low spot in your tank is forward. So if you put it in like that, everything still works. And it's almost at exactly the, the right level compared to the intakes. 
and it makes a nice flat area for the uh, the air valves. Genius. I thought about that. <laughs> All right, so we had marked the tank out for that spot for the bung, but what we're going to do is we're going to do on the other side near the top. And so that's the next step is to glue that bung in place. It's a nice new step drill. Well, that was a heck of a lot easier than the last Kevlar tank I drilled which I think was the Skymaster one, and it just went crazy. So I don't know what was different about that one, but it was very, very easy to drill. And uh, that's it. All right, guys, we are ready to glue the bung into the tank. So one thing I like to do with the fuel fittings is just take a file and sand this surface and the flat surface that's gonna be glued in. Yes, you do have glue that's gonna come out the little holes there but uh, it's nice to have contact all the way around and then same thing we just sanded the outside here of the actual tank hole itself and next step is to glue that in place and let it sit all right guys our conundrum i think that's the right word if it's not well that's okay so we've got the tanks installed how they will fit best downside is we got 40 ounce tanks and they don't really fit that well so we're going to use 32 ounce tanks that's okay problem is when that tank is installed the bung hole is at the bottom and really you want that at the top so we've tried flipping the tanks around we've tried putting this tank in its place but it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense because it doesn't fit as well and uh yeah, so I think what's going to have to happen is we are going to close that hole. So we just take a Dremel and basically get rid of our fitting. And we're going to put a new hole on the, in your camera view, the bottom side, but what is going to be the top side. Well, guys, we thought we would have to use like a Dremel and get rid of all the material around here. But all I did was cut with the, uh, the blade, just cut all the excess glue off and took a flat screwdriver. Unfortunately, bent screwdriver wasn't quite strong enough. So we have to use trusty standard cheap screwdriver. And the uh, bung just is gonna pop right out. So in my previous comments, not too long ago, I said sand the caps when you put them in. And that's the reason you wanna sand the caps when you put them in, because there was zero bite on this cap. And uh, so maybe it's a good thing that we're, uh, we're redoing these caps. So one of them's out. So all we have to do is glue a, a piece of G10 or a plate over top of this. And then just drill a hole and glue the, uh, the bung in the other side. All right, guys, we have all the tanks prepared and ready to go. So this hole here, we have a piece of the center tank, which was cut out. And that's going to be our cover. And then that's our new bung hole right there. So we've done the same thing on both saddles. And of course we are ready to also glue the smoke tank. All right, so we got all the tanks glued and everything. We are just letting those cure till tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow we will add the hardware inside the tank. And then we will leak test the tanks as well too and see if we need to do any TLC to them. We've got the other tank over there and the smoke tank right there. Now we're just working on some general layout stuff. So uh, we basically have these plates pre-made by the owner. He's standing right there. And um, so these are kind of our initial ideas here. We're trying to think about where to put the bubble tanks, the map tanks, and they work really well right there. So behind the turbines, not worried about heat or anything because they're further than the, uh, the gear leg away. So that won't be a problem at all. And that allows us to have a nice short run to the fuel pump, which is awesome. And then a short run to the turbine, which isn't as important. So the longest piece of line is gonna be from the front of the tank, looping back 
to the bubble tank or UAT, which is only going to be about a foot and a half long, so 18 ish inches kind of thing. So I think that layout is going to work awesome. So what we're going to do is we can also get these fancy mounts. There's the map, map tanks. We can get these fancy mounts, which just happen to be available on the lighter side of RC.com. You can get these lovely UAT mounts. They screw down, they glue down, they work with Velcro, they work with zip ties, they come with screws, they come with zip ties. They are amazing little things. Check it out. Link down below. All right, so we come to the end of our evening, guys. We've got a bunch of things gluing and setting till tomorrow. So we've got the UAT tank mounts on both sides, glued and curing. And then we've got the blocks for the turbine plates, which are also glued as well too. So we're gonna let this cure and we will be back at it tomorrow night. All right, guys, back to the F-15 build. We're just kind of messing around with organizing some stuff and just uh, thought we'd plug these lights in. They are pretty uh, pretty awesome for being such a tiny little LED. And uh, there's the two reds. And there's one of the marker lights on the wingtips, little green guys. So nice and bright. And I gotta stop looking at them because I can't see anything anymore. So the reason we plug these in is we're just figuring out the wing wiring before we kind of add some stuff, before we put the, the tanks into the plane. We gotta get the wires run for the wing. So we'll just figure that stuff out and uh, before we can progress with the plumbing. All right guys, so here's kind of the reason why we need to do the things we're gonna do. So we wanna put the tanks in. Problem with putting the tanks in is we need, the tanks are sitting right here we need the lines to run this way. And fishing them afterwards is probably okay, but I wanna do the tanks when all the lines are run. So that's number one, why we need to get the lines run. But uh, kind of the next series of events here is to get the tanks finished, run the lines backwards, get the UATs installed while we have access here, then put the turbines in, then put the control plates in that we, we did the other night. So I think it's just a better series to run the lines forward. Now we're using the ash lock connectors. Um, these are, I love using these things. They work really well and there's a locking pin and uh, they're great. So anyways, that's what we're using on the fuselage to wing connection. Now tip time here again is, I've talked about this in all my other builds. When I do these connectors, there's gonna be one with pins sticking out this one and right there and then one without the pins so i like to put the pin side on the wing so you can actually take a servo lead plug it into here plug it into the receiver and run your servos without hooking the entire plane up so hopefully that makes sense so this end will be sticking out of the wing we can plug this into the receiver just being careful with polarity and then this side here is the one that's actually gonna go on the fuselage. So we're gonna get these connections made up. Made up. They're pretty simple. We got one, ail one aileron, one flap, and a double line for our light. And then we've got the other light near the front of the wing, which is gonna come through right there. And that's what we're working on. All right, so we have the wiring done for both wings. We're basically ready to progress with the tanks. Now at this stage, you wanna start thinking about uh, where everything's gonna be placed. You don't just wanna put the tanks in and say, okay, well, we're gonna put the UATs here. It's a good thing to think about all this stuff and plan it out first. So we've got our UAT location, we've got our tank location, we need to figure out our vent location. So a couple of the things to think about is this plane is gonna be transported on a cradle. And even if it was laying flat, we do have quite a bit of space under this center section, and we've also got a bunch of space underneath the nose. So what we're gonna do is probably put the vents under these sides. Now the, there's two separate fuel systems in here, so we're gonna have two vents. And what that looks like is right behind the vertical support right there, that's where the vent line's gonna be. So our Sullivan tank is the final one and that's gonna feed right to the vent line. So the path, the fuel path here is we've got the UAT back there. 
So the UAT, when you're filling it up, goes into the fuel supply of the main tank, out the vent line, in the fuel supply of the Sullivan tank, out the vent line, down to the vent. And the vents we're using are these DreamWorks high flow vents. So I've, I use these on all my planes. I love them, they're great. They come with a nice plug and everything as well too. And the taxi tank fits on these and just plugs in. Great little setup, I've used these for a long time and uh, that's what we're gonna use on this, uh, this setup. All right, so we got our vent location right there and we got a matching one on that side hidden behind all the crud. So vents are done. And now that we have that figured out, the next thing we can do is tanks, 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 tanks. So, all right guys, we are ready to button up these tanks. So a couple things that we're using here, this is our uh, bung setup. So on the actual tank feed, we've taken a piece of brass tubing and just soldered it over top. That just prevents the, uh, the tube from pulling off. And then we've got our vent piece on here. We're gonna put some tie wire on that as well too. Uh, when you do cut these vent ends, make sure you don't cut them flat or they can seal to your tank. So always cut that little angle on there and uh, prevents it from sealing to your tank and causing problems. So that's ready to go in. We have to make our tubing extension on there. So because of the length of this tank, the way we're gonna have this set up is we're going to have a felt clunk that reaches the bottom part of the tank or the back side of the tank. You wanna use a stiffener like this and there's just gonna be two little pieces of, of line in between. Now the reason for this, it's a little bit counterintuitive to what most people think, but you do not want the clunk folding it back, folding back on itself. Worst case scenario is it would fold back and be stuck at the top of your tank uh, in which you would very quickly lose uh, your turbine. So this just prevents it from folding back on itself and it's got some nice movement in the two pieces of line. Now the line we're using here is Sullivan ProFlex Universal Fuel Line. This stuff is absolutely phenomenal. It's amazing stuff. Uh, what is it? proprietary fluoro elastomer line. So will never harden, use, useful for all the different fuels. And uh, it's also heat resistant as well too, but you can fold this stuff, tie it in knots, and it doesn't, uh, doesn't crimp and stuff. So it's amazing stuff, but uh, this is what we're gonna use on the, uh, the in-betweens there. And we're gonna put these tanks together. Now, before we put these tanks together, we still have a bunch of crud in the tank right there, see it in the bottom corner. So what you wanna do in this case, do not use water in the tanks, use something like fuel or isopropyl alcohol. This is nice because you can just dump it in the garbage bin and it just evaporates, or you can dump it outside, I guess, and it would evaporate. So we're gonna put about 500 milliliters in each tank, rinse it out, and uh, then the tanks will be clean, put our tanks together, and then we'll pressure test them. And there is our two complete fuel tank systems for the Kevlar tanks. One giant leap for man, one small step for mankind or something. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got the tanks almost done here. So what we're doing is we're gonna glue these tanks in or silicone them in, and we've left two lines here. So the longer line feeds back this direction to the UAT, then the shorter line is what goes to the Sullivan, or Dubro, sorry, uh, tanks. So that's the reason for those two different lines. So this one's just long enough or long enough to be workable and to be able to hook up to the tank. And then all the excess that loops forward is going to sit in that section beside the intakes in front of the tank. There's lots of room up front there. Like lots actually, like there's basically the former is right here and you've got all the space for that tube to sit in. So plenty of room there. <clears throat> so that's all we're gonna do now is get these tanks installed. Just give them a quick rub down with rubbing alcohol. Put a couple globs of silicone on there where it's fairly easy to access and uh, they're ready to go. But we do have to leak test them first. I just thought about that. 
So all we do for that is we basically fill up the tank with water, we plug one side, blow on the other side with your mouth. You don't need to pump these up or anything like that. And then you see if there is any air bubbles coming out of the tank. The alternative is to pressurize it with your mouth, leave it closed off. If you come back tomorrow and there's still pressure in it, then you're good. All right guys, so as the final step in this video, we got the tanks installed. So they are just placed in there. The bottom ones, the Kevlar tanks are siliconed in place. So we put a glob of silicone on the back. We slid the tank back into that spot and then put a glob of silicone on top and stuck the, the tank up a little bit. The Sullivan tanks or the Dubro tanks, sorry, are in there because they are just holding the, the primary fuel tank nice and flat. So we did the same thing on the other side. You're looking at the left fuel tank system right now. And then we've got our six millimeter Festo lines hooked up to the tank as well. So one of them's coming out and it's gonna get hooked up to the Dubro tank. The other one's gonna be run to the back to the UATs, the, the MAP UATs. So once the, the UATs get installed, then we can install the turbines and start progressing forward even more. So that is everything for this episode of the FB Jets F-15, don't know what scale it is, big airplane build. Um, one sixth, seventh, seventh, that's it? Yeah. Huh. So thanks guys for tuning into the videos. Um, it, hopefully you guys are enjoying watching this build series. I know we've dealt with some big problems, but it's also been a good jet to put together as well too. So if you are thinking about ordering this jet, don't shy away from it. Uh, it's definitely accomplishable for the average builder as long as you are following thoughtful processes and following the video. So if you guys have any questions, post them down below. You can also shoot me an email as well to the lighter side of RC at gmail.com. And if you guys have missed any of the videos, there is a link to the build list down below for the FB Jets F-15 build. That's it guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Give the video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and we will see you in the next video.